Hello everyone, uh, thank you for joining us and you're welcome to today's webinar uh, which is covering what's new in both Herdwatch and in Blockwatch. So my name is Owen Maloney, I'm Head of Customer Success here at Herdwatch and I'm delighted to say I'm joined today for the first time by both Kira Long and Michael Staunton. Uh, Kira works as a product owner on the Herdwatch side of the business and Michael is the same product owner on the Blockwatch side of the business. So. How are you both, guys? And thanks very much for joining us on today's webinar. Yeah, not too bad. Thanks. Thanks for Hi, having us. How's, how's things? All good. All good. Looking forward to hearing about all the new stuff that that's been going on in both Flockwatch and Herdwatch. So, as I said, both Michael and Kira are really heavily involved on the development side of things when it comes to the app uh, on both Herd, or Herdwatch and Flockwatch. So, they're going to cover over all the new stuff that we've been working on over the past couple of months. So before we do hand over to both Kira and Michael, just for anybody that's maybe new to Herdwatch or indeed new to Flockwatch over the past couple of months, we'd like to just tell you a little bit about the, the backstory and the Herdwatch story to date. So Herdwatch launched in 2014, uh, it was actually February 2014, and since then we've gone on to become the market leading app in both Ireland and the UK. We now have over 17,000 members that are using both the Herdwatch and now the Flockwatch app on a daily basis to help them to save time remove paperwork, and make better decisions on their farm. Over that eight years, we've also managed to download over 2.1 million animals uh, into the Herdwatch and now the Flockwatch app, um, mostly from, from the likes of the Department of Ag or Ag Food here in Ireland. And we also link in with APHIS uh, in Northern Ireland and BCMS and Scott uh, EID in Scotland. Over those eight years as well, we've managed to help users register over 2.3 million calves. So we, we surpassed 2 million calves this springtime, which is a huge milestone for us. And uh, we've drove well past that now at this stage. Uh, and on average, our members and our farmers tell us that Herdwatch and now Flockwatch saves them up to three hours per week when they're at their busiest on the farm. I suppose the reason that we wanted to tell you all, all these things is because here at Herdwatch and at Flockwatch, we're all about innovation. Um, innovation is what we do to create value for you, our farmers, um, every single day. It's always been Herdwatch's mission to, to help simplify and digitize your farm information and the processes, which will ultimately help you uh, grow your farm income, empower you, and help you to make more informed and better farm and business decisions, um, and also ultimately increase the profitability of your, your farm and your business. Um, and we do this by helping you to efficiently you know, manage your paperwork, reduce your paperwork, and take the hassle out of farm compliance and quality assurance. Um, and look, having all these things and, and being able to digitize your records is ultimately going to help you to improve your ac accuracy um, and the usefulness of having the app, you know, on your hands helps you to make decisions on the spot. Um, at Herdwatch as well, we work directly with farmers. You know, the reason that a lot of the, the new features that Kira and Michael are going to tell us about have come about is from speaking to farmers that use Herdwatch and Flockwatch every single day. So your help helps us to deliver easy to use, high quality and innovative, accessible farms um, solutions and it's accessible to farms of all types and sizes. So regardless if you're a sheep farmer, suckler, dairy or beef, Herdwatch is here and it's going to cater for you. Um, we're also backed by world class customer experience and real time integrations. As I said a couple of seconds ago, we rely on you, the farmer, um, to help provide us with continuous feedback. That's what Kira and Michael um, are working with every single day is the feedback from everybody that uses Herdwatch and uses Flockwatch, you know, and that's what drives the new features, but it also helps us to solve the problems. You know, when you come to us with something that maybe isn't working as it should, it helps us when we fix those. Once again, that's gonna ultimately help you drive your business forward. And I suppose with that, that's when we're gonna be handing over to Kira now in a second, and um, she's gonna help talk to you and demonstrate as well a number of the new features that we've been asking for. So we're nearly there, Kira. I'm going to hand over to you now in a minute or two, but just to tell everybody about exactly what it is you're going to be covering. And then Michael, obviously yourself on the Flockwatch side, what you're going to be covering. So uh, Kira's going to tell us about the new action drawer and uh, that's been developed within Herdwatch um, and how it dynamically allows you to search and create new records even quicker than before. We also have a new breeding performance area um, all around your, your breeding KPIs, and it's going to allow you to monitor your breeding season's progress. Livestock sales and purchases is a relatively new thing as well that's been added to Herdwatch. Uh, and we'll also touch on how you can now uh, actually take pictures to scan in some documents to, to, to process against your animals as well. So there'll be more on that towards the end of the webinar. 
We've also created the ability to to actually um, create your own new custom smart list in Herdwatch as well. So Kira will speak to you about that and how easy that is to do. Um, we'll touch briefly on you know getting your milk records into into Herdwatch as well and how that will help you to track you know how your actual cows are performing on the dairy side of things. And also a big addition to to Herdwatch and Flockwatch in this release is weather information is now going to be available in the app with a five day local forecast. So Kira will touch on all those things. Um, at that point, then we're going to hand over to Michael. He's going to take over and he's going to tell you all about, I suppose, first of all, getting Flockwatch. If you if you have sheep alongside cattle, how you can swap over from Herdwatch to Flockwatch and start creating your flock on the spot. Um, weight recording, which is very important for sheep farmers. So that's a new feature that we've added into Flockwatch in this release. So Michael's going to tell us all about you know, how we can record your weights, and which is ultimately going to help you track your average daily gains. The movement's out as well. So when, when animals leave your flock, how you can actually easily and quickly record the movement out of animals off your flock in Flockwatch. And also how we've added um, farms and farm maps, I suppose, into Flockwatch as well. It's already been existing in Herdwatch, but we've added it into Flockwatch in this release. Uh, towards the end of the webinar, I just touched on it there. Kira will speak to you about it too. Um, Herdwatch Automate, um, it's something we'll chat to you about a little bit further down the line uh, in the webinar, but it basically allows you to take a picture or scan a document the likes of your kill sheets, which is going to automatically add that information on those animals um, that you've sold or sent to the factory. Just a little bit before I do finally hand over to you, Kira. just about, as I said at the very start of the webinar, I heard what you're all about innovation. It's been something we've been trying to do since we launched back in 2014. Um, I just want to show you some of the things that we've managed to do every single year. Um, so after our launch in the UK in 2017, we also came up with the, the, the tag and medicine scanner, which has been a massive success and allows farmers to very quickly and uh, easily add in medicines into Herdwatch and now into Flockwatch as well. Following on from that, uh, it's about two years ago at this stage that the Herdwatch Next Generation app was launched. It was June 2020, um, which revolutionized the way Herdwatch works. And following on from that, in, in 2021, uh, the big ticket item was, was the actual farm maps, which allows you to use satellite imagery to actually create your fields and map your fields uh, and paddocks inside in the Herdwatch and Flockwatch app. We also added the likes of your milk performance module uh, and in the UK allowed farmers that are dairy farming to connect with both NMR and CIS to get their milk recordings into Herdwatch. And this year, um, Michael's big piece, uh, Flockwatch launched, I think, was it February or March, Michael, Flockwatch hit? hit yeah, about towards the middle end of March, we, we launched it. Okay, so we're about three months in with Flockwatch at this point, and you can see even since then, we, we've managed to drive on again and add even more features into the next release of Flockwatch. But also in Herdwatch, we've continued to innovate and add more value there. Um, you can see your, your livestock sales and purchases, new smart lists, the breeding dashboard, which we'll show you in a couple of minutes, and the likes of the weather forecast and sheep movements. And as I said, Automate is something that's, that's here now, but with something that's going to continue to iterate and get better over time. Okay, I'm ready finally, Kira, to, to hand the reins over to yourself. Um, I know you're, you're itching to get going there to tell everybody about um, the new stuff that's arrived in Herdwatch. So um, what I'm going to do here at this point, everyone, is just actually share my screen. And we're going to open up Herdwatch. And Kira, I'm going to let you take away from there. So you tell me what you'd like to discuss first. Um, yeah, so if you could possibly go through the action drawer first, that would be great. Sure. Um, sure. So, so yeah, we're going to go to that plus sign to get into the action drawer. Okay. So yeah, look, it looks kind of different. And I suppose um, the main aim of this really is you know, time is precious when you're on farm and you want to record something. So uh, with that in mind, we really designed this in such a way where you could find what you needed to do uh, quickly and get to there and do whatever it is or view whatever information. Um, so yeah, one of the main things um, you'll notice is that the button to kind of go to the right to find what you're looking for is gone. So now it's actually a vertical scroll. So you'll be going up and down as opposed to, to the side. Um, so that's the first thing. And then um, just to make it easier on what on to find, instead of having to scroll and find what you need to do, this search box at the very top. Um, so you'll be able to type in what you're looking for. And it's going to act like, you know, Google as such. You'll be typing in um, a word that you wanted to do. For example, you could put in yeah, calf and it's going to say add calf or okay. uh, view animals. Even if you wanted to put in serve, um, it's going to say yeah, view serves or add serves. So it's going to get you where you need to go a lot quicker um, because we're adding features all the time. So it's going to be the quickest way um, of getting to where you need to be. 
Okay. Um, so yeah, it's going to be dynamic. You'll be able to search for it. It will appear. Um, and the handy thing is based, if you're going to go into the same things every time, it will save these searches as recent searches. Um, and you'll be able to just click on them automatically and go in straight from there. Um, and look, the, the good thing is it's, it's, they're not, you know, the words that you could type in, um, dose, if you wanted to, like if we were dosing at the moment, um, and it's, it's kind of smart in a way that will pick up what um, task that is. So it's like add cattle treatment or view, uh, remedies and treatments. So it's designed for, uh, ease of use. Um, so type in, if you have a play around, type in what you're kind of looking for and that should kind of tailor, um, the tasks that we have in the app for it. Brilliant. Brilliant. So I think what we're recommending everything, everybody to do, Kira, correct me if I'm wrong, is, you know, from now on, when you want to view something pretty much or, or do something new, it's, you know, click on your plus button. And it's even, even instead of scrolling down, just just type in what you want to do at the top or even this, the first couple of letters and it's going to find it for you. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's going to get you where you need to go a lot quicker. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Brilliant. Brilliant. Super stuff. Um, where would you like to go next, Kira? Um, so even we go breeding performance if we we can go home first. Yeah, so yeah, and in, in the breeding tile, yeah. And if we scroll down, it should be on the right hand side. Yeah. So there's a new tile here within breeding breeding performance. So what's going on in here, Kira? Yeah. So this basically is um, it's going to it's key uh, performance indicators for your breeding herd, uh, how successful you were in getting cows back into calf. Um, it's you know it allows you to to see how they're performing. You know what can be improved. Um, if there's any issues um, or anything. So basically, basically it's a tool that allows farmers um, to help the performance of their own herd. Um, so yeah, if we scroll down to the bottom even for a second, their own, yeah. just to mention if if you're an all year round calving herd, that little toggle at the end, you can just switch that off and that will update your information um, because we calf um, early in the spring, that's it's set to, to on automatically. Okay. Um, so that's the main thing, but yeah, so just it summarizes animals um into what category they fall into even if you click on one of the info icons it will tell you um how those um categories are made up so um uh, just if you want a bit more information um yeah and then you can even click on one of those tiles and that will give me a table of all the animals that are contained in that at a specific specific time okay so if i click into this or click on this cow served here it's, it's telling me 60 so it's going to actually show me that list of 60 cows that have been maybe ai or served by the bull yeah, so this gives me the exact list and um, you'll see it, it will scroll to the right and it will scroll down um, and then we'll have um, we we'll have a lot of information there. But even if at the top, if you wanted to, you know, you can sort that information um, by any of those, they're all sortable. Perfect. So I can go first serve date. If I click on that, it brings it back yeah. up. Super. And you can see straight away, obviously, your expected calving date based on the serve and everything is there really quickly. So rather than having to drill into each animal individually, this is this is really, really handy where you can see a full list of, you know, when cows are served and when they're expected to calve. So that's really, really cool. Um, yeah. You know, and, you know, you can really even if you the magnifying glass, you can filter it down even further. If you did want to kind of zone in on a particular type of animals, you could say lactation and you could just limit it to, you know, heifers. You could say uh, lactation one. And that will just bring up all of your heifers that have just calved. Okay. So it's it's very handy. Um, and, yeah, it will group them all into into the different categories. Super. Um, I suppose just while we're, while we're looking at all this breeding information here, um, I think it's important just, I suppose, for anyone that's that's farming in Ireland, any, any suckler or dairy farmers, just so you know that obviously we have a link with ICBF, which allows you to automatically bring in all your technician serves and records into the app. So the beauty of doing that is, you know, if, if we connect your herd watch account to ICBF, any any serves by your AI man or your technician are going to automatically come in here and populate this area then. Um, and I think, am I right in saying here that the milk records will also come in from, from ICBF um, it wants, wants to get linked up so yeah you and nmr and cis as well so all that rec all those records should flow down perfect and that's going to live in the, in the in the performance area on the home screen so i'll just yeah. show that really really quickly so you know in here uh if you have your milk records coming into herd watch if you pop into performance you can pop into milk recordings and see everything that you need to see on how cows are actually performing from a milk perspe perspective and um, so that's living there for you. So is there anything else here within within the breeding performance you'd like to talk about or show anybody before we move on? Yeah, quickly, I might just you see we're kind of we're focused on the breeding part of it now. So then um, the pregnancy um, section there, that tab, and then that will allow us to see how well they held in calf or if they scanned in calf. Okay. Um, if you just scroll back up to the top and then to the right of serves, it's pregnancy there. Just above the share. Yeah. Okay. 
just before, above the share um icon oh, yeah, sorry. yeah yeah, so, you don't know. So, yeah so this will focus once you start if you if you scan them this will kind of feed into that um and this how well they actually did uh hold in calf so they're assumed pregnant after 21 days but once you start scanning then that information if if you load that in that will appear here within this within this calving season um so some really really handy um information right at your fingertips there yeah um, be a great management tool yeah super thanks kira um where would you like to go next um if we could go to the livestock um purchases and sales so it's uh in the performance yeah, yeah. so if i pop into performance we now have an icon here it's been here for a little while for your livestock sales and purchases and um, yeah. And we'll go into sales. I actually don't have any purchases in there at the moment. Yes, yeah, okay. so we can quickly see um, animals group by date um, of when they left the herd. So you can click in on any of those there. And just go to the first one here. Yeah, so I can see um, when they left, where they went to, uh, where we got the information from. And even if you click on animals, I'll see what animals um, actually did move if I want to drill down into the individual level. Um, and you see there I have um, a Mart docket actually uploaded as well. Mm -hmm. And how I did that, I just, you know, I clicked the up, update sale details and I just uploaded a picture from uh, my phone then. And that was just, it's just handy to keep everything in one place. And at the end of the year, when you're trying to keep track of whatever, and, you know, if you wanted to quickly see what, what they made, instead of having to type it out, you can just upload the docket and see it um, firsthand. It's brilliant. Perfect. And this ties in really, really handily as well with what we were talking about a couple of minutes ago when it comes to uh, the herd watch automate um, feature that we've added in as well so it's something we'll speak a little bit more about towards the end but he, as Kira just mentioned you can now obviously take a picture and add that image of, of your 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 kill sheet or your your sales docket and it's it's going to actually automatically add the price if the price that you got for the animal is on that docket with the tag number it's going to automatically add that price to the animal I'm correct in saying that Kira, I'm saying. yeah yeah exactly yeah um, so this will do the exact same thing if you're buying in animals that will group up by the date that you bought them in and you'll be able to put in a purchase price, uh, same with animals that you sent to the factory. Um, okay. So look, it's going to be really handy um, for people that are definitely that are selling a lot of animals just to keep track of them. So if I click on one of these animals here, I should have a sale price, hopefully. And I do. So that obviously come in from the document automatically. The farmer, you, the farmer wouldn't have to automatically add that in. No, and it just saves time as well. Yeah, of course. Super. Thanks for that, Kira. Um, I think you want to talk about smart list next. Uh, yeah. Kira. So if you want to go to the the plus sign again, there, please. Yeah. And we can actually, it's it is one of these icons, but we can probably type it in if you want a uh, smart list, maybe. I'll go for that. Yeah. Um, and add a uh, smart list then. So add or create a smart list. Perfect. Yes, so this function basically, it's similar to the smart list that we have uh, in app at the moment. But this allows the farmer to specifically uh, set the criteria for themselves and what exact um, animals um, they want to fall in. And this is like it is smart, so it will automatically update based on the criteria that you set out. If the animals kind of fall in and out of that criteria, it will update and remove them animals. Um, so, yeah, it's really handy. I have an example if you wanted to even. Yeah, do you want, I'll let you, you tell me what to do here, Kira, and I'll do that. I just, yeah, so uh, just, it's useful for us at home. Um, normally, we sell um, cattle coming into maybe like 18 months, um, and uh, they, normally they will be weighed or whatever. So, if I just say yearling uh, males or something, if you want to say that, um, yeah. and we can go through that, and it's just that will automatically uh, put the animals in there, and even next year, it will filter those animals in based on that exact criteria. So if okay. I say age in months, the very first one. Yeah. Um, and I can go from 16 to, to 18. Like and then I'll say uh, gender, I can say males. Perfect. And, just and then breed, um, let's see, we'll filter down for limousine uh, cross then. The limousine, yeah. Okay. And then that should create that smart list then. So I'm going to create that smart list and tell me there's 14 animals within that smart list at the moment. Yeah, so that's kind of giving me an idea that, you know, they're kind of ones that are coming up to when we normally start selling them. Um, the great thing about this is that there's so many filters. It's specific to each farmer. They can tailor it as however they would like. Every mm -hmm. farm is different. So this is it's very specific on how you manage your own animals. Um, so like you could go further now, I don't have weights in at the minute, but you could go further and say you wanted only ones there that were above 400 or whatever. Um, very useful, I suppose, if you're going to the factory, you want them under 30 months, you want them to be a certain weight before you're t talking about sending them. Um, so that can be updated. And after you weigh your animals, the ones that are in spec or, you know, the criteria that you've set out, they'll all flow into this. And as soon as they get out of um, the criteria that are set, they'll automatically be removed. You don't have to do anything further. Brilliant. 
and just to show where that smart list lives then it's just obviously popping on the home screen into your herd list and it should be at the top, I believe, now, or it should be there somewhere. It's uh, alphabetical, yes, yeah, so it should be down. Okay, yeah. So it'll be down, yeah. but and you can obviously start to favorite it, and it, it, it'll it'll um, it'll stay at the top. So um, depending on what we the best. There it is there, so if I just favorite it and go back. Um, and yeah, the other smart, you can kind of, you can save that as a group, which is very handy. Um, yeah. if, you know, if you have a group of animals, say if I had maiden heifers coming in every year, it would automatically um, pull them into a list. And if I wanted to treat them as a group, I was actually going to dose them or something. Mm -hmm. I could hit the three dots on the right hand corner um, and I could save it as a group. Um, and then that would allow me just to select that group and say that I treated them. I, you know, I gave them a medicine on such a date. So um, it cuts down on having to get the individual numbers or anything like that. Yeah, so you can very quickly record your treatment and not have to go searching for tags. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Brilliant. That's great. Uh, I think uh, we're pretty much there, Kira. Is there anything else you'd like to like to demo or showcase? I know you want to talk a little bit about the weather. We, ha we actually have a little video to show you how the weather works, and we're going to play in a second. But before we do that, it, was there anything else, Kira? Um, um, like no, I don't think at the minute. Sure, look, I'll wait for a few questions to come in, and I can easily touch on Anathan then again. If Marvin is, is helping out throughout, so he'll show, hopefully be able to answer most of your questions. Um, thanks for that, Kira. Uh, I think we just want to finish off. Uh, I know we might just discuss the weather that's been added. It just doesn't show in the in the PC version, obviously. But uh, if you're using Herdwatch, obviously on, on your your mobile device or tablet or your phone, you know you'll see the weather is going to appear. Actually, it's in the top right hand corner. I think, Kira, isn't it? Um, it is. Yeah. And it's going to it's going to pick obviously you know pick up where your location is and show you what that weather is so i'm just going to play this video and uh, you can maybe just discuss how it works here while it's playing yeah no worries at all that's perfect so you can see on the right hand um the top right hand corner that it's the 17 degrees so we clicked on that and that brought up my location so you're you're, ta you're you can view these two um so we clicked into the top green and then that will give me a five day forecast in the future um, where my location is, what the expected weather is. And then on the bottom map, we can hit play and that's going to show us kind of the weather. Um, there was a bit of rain there this morning, so that's going to slowly come in. Um, but you can also click on that and it'll bring up full screen um, the map. Uh, so I think that should happen. Yep, and yeah. you can see then uh, the weather that is taking place. Um, as well, you can this show labels. Um, you can select that and if you have any um, maps uh, recorded on the farm and you can see there um, you can hide that and you can show them so that just so shows where your your land is at the minute and you can filter in on that if you want you can zoom in and yeah you'll still get the rain coming up there and um, you, there's also a search function if you wanted to search for a particular area in Ireland um, you'd be able to type it in and um, it's searchable so um yeah that's um the main bit of the weather it's very handy you know obviously for just to have it in app just to have everything in one place okay. um yeah and then once you go back then it will uh, update then you can see the overall weather forecast and the map as well then as well Super. um i suppose just a quick one because obviously i'm conscious that we have you have people maybe watching that are in the uk i presume weather works in the uk as well kira Exactly, yeah. So it will be based on your location. And if you have maps recorded, it will automatically go to, to there as well. Um, and if not, then it will just it will just come back to the office where we're based in Ross Gray. Super. Thanks for that, Kira. Um, I'm sure there'll be plenty of questions, so I uh, will be coming back to you. But um, thanks a million for all that help there. Michael, um, hope you're ready to go. You're, you're well rested there now. You've got a good good break. So uh, yeah, I just want absolutely. to share screen again now, and we're going to have a little chat about um, flock watch um, and what's been added new uh, within flock watch um, what you might notice is i'm actually still I I here in herd watch because i think the first thing you want to tell people about michael is how you know if you have cattle and sheep you know how you can transition yourself from herd watch into the flock watch side of things as well yeah exactly um so within within herd watch and flock watch obviously it, it is one app so there's no separate app you have to download um so if you go into the top left hand corner for the hamburger menus we call it you click on there and you can see what's directly underneath that is the switch to flock watch so you click on that and it brings you into your your herd if you have or your flock obviously if you have um, cattle and sheep this brings your sheep side now the reason we have it like that is i suppose for compliance records that you have one medicine cabinet so when you're recording a medicine on either your flock watch side or your herd watch side it will all go to one area so for reporting there's not two separate ones so it's just from from that point of view it's it's easy that you just can switch between the two to see where you are so 
I think a lot of our hard watch users that have sheep would be easy for them to, to just to get clock watch and get going on that side. Perfect. Um, yeah. So where would you like to go first, Michael? Or is there anything you'd like to focus in around? Um, and, and yeah, so the first, I suppose, new functionality in latest release we have is basically weight recording. So if you go into the plus button there, and if you basically go on to weight recording there. Okay, and yeah. I presume what Kira was saying with the, the search functionality works the exact same in Flockwatch as it does within Exactly, so if you type in weight there, it'll it'll go to, it'll bring up um, exactly ad weighing record there. Okay. And in you go then. So first thing is obviously the date and the person who's performed the task, so, and off you go then. So. Basically, this is a way of imagine you're in the pen recording recording your your lambs with a with a clock scale, and um, it's basically simple. You click on the individual record and you type in the weight. So if you click on there and add in forty one kilo zone, or it basically calculates the ADG of the lamb straight away on the spot there, and it'll give you the last live weight that that animal was weighed at as well. So you can see forty kilos come up there. So that's basically how you would add in a weight. Um, obviously, that's your entire flock you have there in front of you. So maybe a bit more specific when you're actually um, weighing animals. So if you click on groups there on, yeah, and you can click on let's say yo lambs, let's say for 2022, and you have the group of them in there. You can basically add the animals in directly like that as well. Also, you can search for an individual animal with a tag as well if you wanted on the there. So if you were put in five four three, it would bring up that animal. Um, to the very top and you add in the weight that way then directly and um, also on that as well on if you actually want to go back out to the main screen again okay. and the yes so the flock section here as well so we also have this basically you can connect your eid reader at this point and select your animals with your eid reader if, if, if you have one from that side so you would go to the top right there where the uh, bluetooth button is and you connect your reader and um, from that point and then basically, as an animal's going through the race, you'd scan the animal's tag and the cursor will go to that um, animal's tag number and you just type in the weight at that point. Okay. So we'll just um, go through the animal. Exactly, yeah. Um, also at this stage, obviously, with um, with flock watches, that not all your sheep are going to be in here. Um, so if you come across an animal in the race, or even if you've none of these animals recorded and you have your EAD reader there, you just basically scan the tag number and the animal will appear at the top of the page there with a, with a green head, you type in the weight, and then you basically save the animals in the same way as you would with a bulk ad record on Flockwatch here. So you don't have to go in and create the animals first and then go and add the weights. It's just a, a way of doing it all, all in one that way. Okay, so, perfect, thanks. Uh, yeah. This a little bit bigger just in case people- Exactly. Can... So exactly, so then uh, let's say you're adding the weights of the animals through, you just click on the bottom um, where it says two animals weighed there, and you can have a look and see the list of animals that yeah. have been weighed at that point. So, so you can see um, that there's the two that we, we, we popped in a couple of minutes ago, and when you're happy enough, you can just hit save. Um, and if, I presume every time, you, same as Herd Watch, Michael, um, you know, if you weigh these animals again in a month's time or in a couple of weeks' time, you know, it's going to recalculate your average daily gain uh, for those particular animals. Exactly, yeah. So it's going to recalculate your daily gain so you can you can get an instant feedback on exactly how your, your lambs are doing. Um, so if you're if you weigh them just after the eight weeks or weaning time then and you're you're going drafting a few then you can i suppose organize them into 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 ones that are going and ones that you might want to give them some special attention to so it's a it's a great tool and easy for a farmer on the spot to, to do that perfect um, um and where's the easiest place then michael is it i, I to, yeah you see weights that i've recorded for animals if i'm, if I'm looking at exactly so if you want to basically pop into the performance tile there then so you can see Okay. You have all the weights that you've recorded there then so you have all weights and then you can have animals weighed then so you can click into an individual animal and you can see the list of how many times it's been weighed and the last data was weight and yep. who did the, the performance of it and then you can see yeah exactly how that animal has performed on the different dates so Perfect. it's all about getting that information at the end of the year to say okay we have tracked the let's say the the sire this ram and one ram might have been working better than the other or it, different things like that too that'll help you make your decisions at the end of the year so um so it'll be easy like that i suppose also on the weights as well is that like everything on hard watch everything will be reportable on so the reports for for weighing on these will be will be coming as well as we as we go through them so um you'll be able to pull down your excels at the end of the year and see and see all that key information 
So it is. It's um, it's going to be a handy tool for farmers to to just track their weights easily. Brilliant. Yeah, it's a great addition. Um, yeah. Um, you want to have a little chat quickly about um, recording movement out for animals, I think. That's exactly, yeah. So uh, I, know, I suppose another key thing is that with sheep farming especially, there's always animals coming and going from the farm. So this is a way of basically keeping your flock within flock watch up to date and recording those movements off movements out of your farm. So if you click on the plus button again there, Ron. Yeah. Yeah. And if you can scroll down to the um sheep movement, sheep out. movement out here. Yeah. So basically what a sheep moving out is you're basically removing your animals from your flock within herd rot. So you're keeping track. So we have the the basically the reason for a movement out would um the drop down menu there. So we can either have sold at market, sold privately, we'll have them sent to the factory or we just say they moved out because they died on farm. Okay. So you want to basically click on sold at market there. Um, oh, yeah. So what that happens here then is you have, say the animals are sold at market, you can click on, let's say the buyer there. So these would be saved contacts you might already have. So if you want to say Vanilla Slow March, you can say that's where these lambs were sold to. Or, um, and you can put in the sale price at this point here as well. You can say, mm -hmm. right, I, I sold, let's say my hoggets at 250 euros, or I can say a total price if you have a batch of them that you've sold as well. And you can put a little quick note in there as well to say, right, I can say maybe it was pen, pen 11 at a certain date that was sold, or you can, anything like that, basically, that will just give you an idea when you're when you're gathering these records at the end of the year, um, what, what this was sold for. So at this point then, if you click on next is basically, this is where you select your animals. Um, and you can obviously connect your EID reader at this point and select them with your EID reader. So if you were in a race and they were loading them into the trailer um, and you can basically run your reader along them and select them all and you can save them at that point. Or as you said, Owen, if you want to pop into groups there, yep. you can see, right, so these are nine year lambs I have for, for selling or they were sold and you can basically click on select all here on the there and you can save them and all those animals be moved out and the record basically that they were they were sent to market and you have the records there then for, for that individual uh, group Perfect. so same yeah. same idea then then if, if you want to track obviously and see where these animals are so if you go into your compliance style there and you can see then if you go to animal movements so you can basically have a record then so if you see the first movement there you can click on that you can see okay that happened on the 22nd and it was basically animal um animal died on farm and you can say the reason for it move, moved off and then if you want to click back out of that then and go into the um movements that were moved out there at that point today you can see the, the animals that were moved out the reason was sold at market and you can see the buyer and the sale price and obviously the animals then they were moved as well so just another thing, I suppose, for guys that are um, sending animals to the market as well, like that. So if you click on animals their own, yeah, you can basically you can print this PDF as well. So you can send that as a PDF to yourself, and um, Don't know. I, that, not not on the on the web version like that, yeah. but you can send this as a PDF to yourself as an email. And you can print it out and that attach it to your dispatch document, and it make your life a lot easier when you're heading to the market. Then you don't yeah. have to be searching through that for your um, tag numbers and all that. So. Brilliant. And I just noticed as well, Michael, obviously, when I moved those nine animals that, it, you know, it, it reduced the flock numbers down from, in this instance, 12 to three. So it just kind exactly. Of exactly. Yeah. So you always keep it on track of the comings and goings in your in your flock and you can keep a, an up to date record to see where everything is at a particular point in time. So um, it's handy from that point of view. And as I repeated earlier, then that these will be all um reportable on so built a run report at the end of the year on sale on animals moved out um and you can see what was sold at what point or you can highlight something if you had a particular amount of animals that were moved off farm or died for a reason you can just keep an eye on that and something you can i suppose address at the end of the year and when you're when you're taking stock of everything really okay super thanks michael um anything else you'd like to talk about or just chat about before before we maybe go to some questions um michael yeah um on top of that then i suppose we have farming maps available now uh on the flock watch side of sheet of um things here so i suppose for any sheep farmers that were only on flock watch now we have all the great features that we have available on herd watch to do a farming map and records and that side of things available within flock watch now so it's going to be just a great addition for guys that um haven't seen this before that they'll have yeah. all that functionality so it's, it's here and it works the exact same as as, as herd watching 
um, if you're looking for more, I suppose, detail or information on how to actually create your paddocks or um, map your farm, uh, create your spray records, um, you can check. We've, we've done webinars on that before. Um, if you just, just check that out on YouTube, you'll find everything that you need there. Uh, just a quick question on that, Michael. I presume if you had previously created maps within Herdwatch and you pop over to Flockwatch, do they still show for you there? Mm -hmm. um, they do indeed, yeah, they do yeah. indeed. So what mirrored on one will be mirrored on the other side. So especially with your records and your spray records and paddock records, so you can pull them from both sides. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, just to finish up on it on, on my side is that we're obviously flock watch we're going since March now, and we have lots of new stuff coming as well. So we're very much on, on the journey that we've kicked up we've kicked off and we've had a great start with flock watch and as we go through the season now, we'll be iterating on, on the functionality that we have. So we'll have breeding coming um, soon where we'll be able to see tracking, you know, breeding of, let's say, your tubs that you've let out for the year, your rams, um, scanning results, and I suppose the whole picture from one end of the season to the other to do with sheep records that we will be we will have in there. So we'll be looking out as in further releases down the line now, all that good stuff is going to be coming too. So. Thanks for that, Michael. That's great to hear. Um, I suppose we'll just jump into some, some questions that have come in. Um, that's in and I suppose while we're, we're looking at Flockwatch, Michael, um, there is a question that's come in. Um, a couple of questions, actually. People are, are asking, uh, mm -hmm. is Flockwatch going to integrate with Wayheads or, or what's going to happen there? Yeah, so that is something we are definitely looking at. Um, and we are going to see, so it's going to take stock to see which are the most popular ones that farmers are using at this point. And we have it in our roadmap to start work on that towards the end of the year and get that in there. So yeah, I think we'll see that as a as a piece we'll definitely be working on. Perfect. That's great to hear. Thanks, um, Michael. Um, there's a question from Jenny. Um, thanks for your question, Jenny. She's just asking, is it possible to show the note element, please? So I'm not sure if you have cattle or sheep, uh, Jenny, but I might just for this uh, maybe just pop back over to to Herdwatch itself. So. I think if you're just looking to add a general note to an animal, it's very, very simple and easy to do. Um, you know, as, as always, when you want to do something new, you know, you can do it with your plus button. Um, as Kira mentioned a couple of minutes ago, you know, you can you can search for notes. I, I presume notes is one of the searchable things you can do here, Kira, or else it's going to be as an option. You know, you can, you can add um, a job picture, job note here um, to an animal if you want. So um, you can just put in, you know, uh, note of whatever whatever it is that you want to add to that particular animal jenny um you know you can add an image as well if, if you need to next brings you into your herd list and you know if you want to find that specific animal you can just select that animal and save it and that'll that, add that note to that animal so um whenever you're, you're looking at that animal again it'll live within the history of that animal so if you're looking at animal in the paddock or you're down in the farm you can see that there's a general job or note there recorded against that animal so hopefully that answers your question jenny but feel free to come back if it doesn't um kira just one for yourself uh it's actually one that's come in a couple of times as well and uh, it, it could probably cross over for yourself michael i don't know if the two of you want to maybe answer this but people have been asking uh, um if they're actually given animals more than one medicine um at one time and um, what's the easiest way or is there an actual way to record that in herd watch um, i might over to you Kira, if you don't mind yes um it's actually a new feature that we've just um, included so if i don't know if you can bring up my own herd again Owen, if that's yeah, possible I can indeed. I can indeed. Um, so uh, just this so this is yeah. your, uh, we'll make it a little bit bigger yeah so yeah. if we go if we were doing a cattle treatment and you know to save time instead of having to go into each individual um into treatment we can go into and then we can select. So if I had a cow with mastitis, I can select, or if I wanted to treat her with um, an injection, so we can say tylosin. Um, yeah. And then we gave her a tube as well. So we can go down to Sinulox lactating cow. Um, okay. And if we hit next then, so that allows me to, you know, I have two remedies selected and I can select numerous few if there's more than one treatment on the day. Okay. Um, so once you hit next, then you can put administered by, you should be a drop down in that. Um, I think those is fine. John here. Um... Yeah, and if you hit next, I think that should be all this of the... the. This is for the Tylus, and when I when I yeah. hit next, I can continue. It brings me over to the Sinulox. Yeah, and I just copied over all the information because you know they all had mastitis or whatever. So, um, yeah, and that's the same. It's just copied from a previous treatment that I had, which is very handy. Um, and then you hit next, and then I can just select an animal. You just select um, this, yeah. yeah. 
and if you hit save then so it's as easy as that then we have two medicines recorded against that one animal so it's very handy if you had animals in the crush and um you were you know you were doing a dose and maybe a pour on at the same time or whatever it was um you'd be able to enter those both in at the same time and enter a group of animals and it's it's just a lot quicker than having to, to enter individually okay brilliant thanks for that kira and i think that's going to be a big help to everybody michael just on that i presume that that's that's uh, applicable to the flock watch side if, if animals are getting more than one medicine and uh, does it work the same way it will be coming um on yeah it will okay. be indeed we'll have looking at that so we're hoping that we'll have it working the exact same way okay perfect and um, mm -hmm. there is a question for uh, i think it's probably for you kira uh, from derek he's just asking is there a way to record animals lost or stolen in the app i'd say that's um Maybe flock watch you, that might, uh, probably flock watch one yeah so we haven't a reason for lost or stolen like that um but if that's a reason we want we, we will be able to put that in as a drop down um because yeah sheep do like to get lost and unfortunately they get stolen as well so yeah we will be able to put that in as a reason no problem okay thanks for that derek so we'll pop that in as a feature request and as i said at the start you know it, it's it's stuff that that you know you think that the app doesn't do at the moment that you know by telling us that's how michael and the team know how to get that in there so Keep that coming. And uh, thanks for your question, Derek. Um, another question for yourself, Michael. Uh, it's from Margo. Margo's just asking: Does Flockwatch link with Scott EID and slaughterhouses to get movement records back? So yeah, well, I was actually over at the Highland Show last week, and I was talking to Scott EID. So we are starting, I suppose, our conversations with them about what was possible from a point of view with linking in with them, basically. So if this is something that Flock that Scott EID can do, well, I'm sure we're going to we're going to work with them and see what's be the best so all i'd say is we're at the early stages of conversations with them and it's something we will be we're definitely looking at so um and if it is possible and something they can do for us well then we will try our best to um get it in there for for the farmers absolutely yeah perfect thanks michael um i suppose i never asked you kira but just when you, you were doing your demo um because i know michael mentioned it uh just some things that i suppose that are coming down the tracks is there anything uh herd watch related i suppose over the next you know, coming months that, that maybe people might like to know about or, or just to give them a, an idea of maybe what's been worked on. Yeah, so like um, we've had a lot of positive feedback on, on Michael's side on the Flockwatch. So based on that, we're actually going to bring the EID technology into the Herdwatch app as well. Um, you know, a lot more people are using EID tags in young stock. So um, it'll be definitely handy um, to get integrated with and it will work the exact same as the Flockwatch. Um, and Michael actually has a few, he knows the few of the readers that are currently integrated with. So we will work off the same basis and we'll go from there then with that. Perfect. Thanks for that, Kira. That would be great. Um, so show all calves now being EID tagged. Um, there's a question from John uh, coming in for yourself, Michael. Um, John just asking, in Flockwatch, do all sheep have to be uh, electronically tagged before they can be logged onto the app? Um, all breeding sheep will be uh, EID'd. Yeah, so if if you don't have an EID reader, you can obviously add the animals in in um, manually as well. So we we don't have a basic. Let's say you don't have to add in the fifteen digit tags. So if you identify your sheep, let's say five digits, you can go in and create them manually like that and add them in um, directly like that yourself and search for them that way. So if you were to go in there to the plus button there, and if you were let's say to add sheep there just underneath, yeah. So you can go in there and you can select it if it's born and farm male or female or from other flocks. So if you say born and farm female there, okay. you can put in basically the purpose of the animal. So what is it? So this was a case of breeding you and you can add in a tag number at this stage here. So if you want to put in, let's say 54321 as an, as an ID number that you have, and you can put in, let's say the season born of the animal then. So if it's, let's say 2020 animal, you can say spring 2020, or if you know the exact date of birth, you can put that in too. Yeah. And you can save the animal then at that point with that information. And that animal will appear in your list um, and identifiable by that number. So yeah, you can put in the mint. It doesn't have to be the electronic tag number. Yeah. Um, thanks for that. Hopefully that answers your question, John, but feel free to come back if there's anything else you'd like to know. Um, mm -hmm. You're very popular here, uh, Michael, this evening. So Porik is asking, uh, he's just saying that he's new to Flockwatch. He has a, a wand reader with all the details of lambing. Can I transfer this information onto Flockwatch? Okay, so if you have the details, let's say, in an, an Excel format, and you have the EID tag numbers attached to them, and let's say you have, you know, the lamb and the breed, for example, if you email that information into us, 
we will be able to upload that information straight into the app for you on that basis. So as long as you have them, them in, in a format in Excel like that to us, we can do that. Um, but as in directly going from the uh, reader to the app uploaded, we don't have that capability at the minute. It's basically a one-on-one -on -one, um, tagging, so sorry, one-on-one -on -one scanning. So it's only individual ones that read into the app at one of the time. So, but I know what you mean. He probably has the daughter stayed on the reader. I was wondering if he can upload it directly only via an Excel sheet, unfortunately, at the minute. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Michael. Uh, hopefully that, that helps a little bit, Pori, but feel free to reach out or if you'd like, if you do have that information um, via an Excel sheet uh, yeah. or document that you'd like to send to us, we're more than happy to try and, and help and get that information uploaded into your, your Flatwatch account. Um, this is, a, I suppose, a generic question for both you guys. Uh, it's from, from Alan. Uh, he's just asking, is there any plans for a weaning percentage feature? Um, Michael, it might be more applicable Maybe to... More people, yeah. yeah, so uh, that is something that we will will be looking at as well to get an overall picture of your, um, basically, your flock at the end of the year. I think as we're building our functionality, as we go through and we have our breeding in there and we have our um, scanning results, and once you've built a full picture of your your you for the year, um, then obviously a weaning percentage would be something in a dashboard that we would definitely love to have in there. And it's definitely something we will be working on. Now, I won't see it happening immediately, but it will be in the back in the backlog there to work on, definitely, yeah. Okay. Thanks for that, Michael. And thanks for your question, Alan. Uh, we'll certainly stick it in as a feature request, um, and hopefully it's something we, we can add in there in time. Yeah. Um, Question from Jackie. Uh, she's just asking, maybe, maybe this one might actually be for you, Kira. She's, it's a simple enough one. Uh, uh, Jackie's just asking, can you change the number of a paddock, say uh, paddock number four to number five? I presume this is if you made a mistake with the, with the naming on a paddock. Yeah. Or change the number from one to five and just reset. I'll take that for you. So hope that answers that question for you, um, Jackie. Uh, but as always, come back to us if there's anything else you need. Um, I think we're pretty much there for now with the questions, lad. So thanks for that. Um, we're just going to move on slightly because I'm just conscious of time. So um, we're nearly there, nearly finished for the evening. Um, we just wanted to kind of touch base a little bit more about, um, I know I mentioned it at the start of the webinar, which is Hard Watch Automate. And Kira touched on it as well as part of her demo that, you know, now we have the ability, you know, if you have your, your kill sheets, um, you can now take a picture of it, which is, and Hard Watch will then scan that to add the actual price that you got for that animal but we're hoping to build on that in time and you know and get get even more stuff very very soon i think we're working on grades at the moment here am i right in saying that off the kill sheets and um, yeah. hoping that that's going to land pretty soon but we're hoping to expand that functionality massively too but we do need your help um you know to, to bring uh automate to the next level so you can see at the moment it's going to allow you to record all your incomings and outgoings in herd watch and you can input the kill sheets today by just simply taking a picture of them and you know, at the moment, the costs that have been applied to that animal, uh, where possible, once the docket has the tag number and, and the price, it's going to add that automatically to that animal for you. But we would like to expand that, as I said, uh, to cover more than just kill sheets. You know, we're looking at the possibility of being able to scan, you know, purchase documents. So, you know, if you've, you've bought feed or if you've bought fertilizer, and um, you know, or any other farm purchases, maybe maybe stuff that you've bought off the vet that you know in time you'll be able to take a picture of that and Herbwatch will automatically scan that document and add that information into the app for you. Um, in order for us to be able to do that, we do need your help. Um, you know, uh, and when I say that what we're doing, what we're trying to do is get as many of these documents that you you get on farm regularly that you know you will be able to scan. So the likes of your, you know, if you have a, a feed purchase docket, fertilizer docket, uh, or any any purchases that you've made on the farm or any milk statements, etc. What we'd like you to try and do is if you just if you could pop over to you can see the web address is there it's info.herdwatch.com slash herdwatch hyphen automate so if you go to that web page um, and you have a document you know that you use it that you get on farm fairly regularly that you'd love to be able to upload into herdwatch and get that information automatically processed into your herdwatch account and um, so if you have any of those statements milk dockets etc you can upload them there just to, all you need to do is upload the actual document and tell us what the document is the more of that that we can get from yourselves and from other farmers, the quicker we're going to be able to actually bring Herdwatch Automate to the next level and get all this information working for you in the app to, you know, give you more value um, and give you more more information at your fingertips. And um, so, if that's something you'd, you'd like to try and do, we'd love to get um, as much assistance from yourselves as possible. So, do please feel free to to head over to that web address, upload your documents, 
and that will help the team to to get Herdwatch Automate to the next level where it's it's hopefully scanning most of the documents that you have on farm on a daily basis. Um, other than that, I think we've got to the end of the webinar. So well done, Kira, Michael, you survived and um, you've done a great job. Thanks a million for all your help. Um, as always, if you, if you didn't catch us at the start or if you missed some of the webinar, you're going to get the replay tomorrow to watch it back. And it will be on YouTube in a couple of days time to watch the full webinar back again. Um, if there is any questions that maybe Michael or Kira and myself didn't get to cover this evening, as always, you know, you can just pop into Herdwatch or into Flockwatch and into the pop into the message center. Uh, send us over the details of what you'd like to know about or if you need some help with something and we're more than happy to give you a call or, or message you back and hopefully get you sorted uh, or else obviously you can give us a call yourself the numbers are there on screen for Ireland and the UK um, and just to mention a couple of important points obviously these are new updates that have come to the app so please just make sure you have the most up-to-date version of the app to get access to these features so um, if you go into the app and you can't see you know the new action drawer that Kira talked about or, or the weight recording in Flockwash that Michael discussed just pop over to the app store and make sure you have the most up-to-date version of the Herdwatch app installed and you'll get access to all those new benefits and features straight away. Um, and just finishing off, um, obviously we mentioned it on most webinars, you know, there's an easy way for you to, to get your hands on, on um, you know, some of the lovely Herdwatch gear that we have available. Um, you can claim your rewards. All you need to do is refer a friend and they can, all they have to do is download uh, and get set up on the free version of, of Herdwatch or Flockwatch. Um, and you can then claim your rewards and there's everything there from hats and hoodies and wellies that you can get your hands on so do please tell people about it and uh, get yourself some rewards but yeah michael kira thanks a million uh hope you enjoyed that looking forward to having you on the next what's new webinar i'm sure there'll be one um before we know it but thanks for all your help tonight and uh, no problem seeing what's thanks, next. All, yeah. thanks a million everybody and we'll see you all again very soon thank you thanks guys